everybody, I'd like to read to you one of my favourite books. I read this to my sons when they were very little, and that was a very long time ago. Uh, it looks like the puppies are going to help me read too. This is, uh, <laughs> this is Scruffy, and this one is Lola. Okay, so the book is called Thud, and it's written by Nick Butterworth. Scruffy, we might have to start again. I'll <laughs> oh, see how we go. Okay, so it's called Thud, and here's our first page, and hope you can see it. And it says, there's lots of little captions here, and it says, what is that creature? Does it have a name? Where did it come from? It's very strange. Oh, I think it's an ugly beast. Ugly beast. Ugly beast. Are you an ugly beast, but Basil the bush baby yawned. He had not had a good night's sleep. The arrival in the middle of the night of the mysterious ugly beast had disturbed just about everyone. Now Basil fancied a snooze in the sunshine. He tied a small hammock between two stumpy trees and climbed in. Soon he began to doze, but not for long. Basil opened one eye. Something was making the ground shake. Thud. There it was again. Stronger this time. Basil's hammock began to sway. Thud. Thud. What's happening, said Basil, as his hammock bounced up and down. Thud. Thud, thud. The ground shook terribly and Basil was bounced right out of his hammock. Suddenly, a great shadow passed over him. Thud, 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 thud. Oh no, oh dear, he squeaked in fright. It's a m, -m, -m monster Basil was right. With great thundering footsteps, a huge monster went crashing by. Basil quaked and hit his face. Thud, 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 thud. The footsteps grew fainter. When Basil could hear them no longer, he dared to look. This is terrible, he weighed. First the ugly beast and now a monster. I must get help. We must get rid of it. Oh, the puppies are coming back. Spike the porcupine was eating more stickleberries when the bush baby found him. Help! Please help, cried Basil. The porcupine quickly pushed the rest of the stickleberries into his mouth. How can I help, he said. Basil told Spike all about the monster. Please, said Basil. Can you make it go away? Your spines look sharp and fierce. I'm sure it would do what you say. Spike frowned. No, he said, I'm not very good at getting rid of monsters. I can do dogs and pigs. Spike thought for a moment. That gives me an idea, he said. Follow me. Piers the warthog was admiring his face in the pond. Excuse us, said the porcupine politely. We're having trouble with a monster. Can you help? We think that if you made a terrible face and showed your tusks and lots of sharp teeth, we think you could scare it away. Piers looked into the pond again. No, no, he grunted. That's no job for me. I'm much too beautiful for that, don't you think? Basil and Spike had to agree. But, said the warthog, I have an idea. Follow me. Have I got the right page? Follow me. That's right, you know. The rainbow birds were screeching and squawking at each other in the tangled branches of a tree. What a dreadful thing, said the warthog. Quiet, please. The birds were quiet at once. We're having trouble with a monster, said Piers. And you peckety beaks are just what we need to drive it away. Thud, 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 thud. The rainbow birds looked worried. 
who began to mumble and squawk together. We don't do monsters, one of the birds said at last. Try the lion. Try the hippopotamus, said another bird. Try the crocodile, squawked another. Do you be able to scare the monster away, Lola? Ralph the lion couldn't help. I got a sore throat, he said. Delilah, the muddy brown hippopotamus, was busy. I'm having a bath, she said. So sorry. Humphrey, the crocodile, just moaned. Can't help, he said. Got toothache. Nobody wanted to face the monster. They asked the aardvark and the antelope. They asked the zebra and the zorilla. What shall we do, said Spike. We've tried everyone. Not quite, said the warthog. There is one more that we might ask. The strange creature who came to the forest last night. The ugly beast, the ugly beast. It's only just come. Where is it going? The creature they called the ugly beast was not like anything they had ever seen before. Where it had come from, no one knew. Whether it would be fierce or friendly, they could only guess. Piers the warthog set off and led the long procession towards the dark forest. There they came upon the ugly beast. Please forgive this intrusion, said the warthog began. Sorry, the warthog began. But we want to get rid of a monster. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, squawked the rainbow birds. Look here, old chap. Do you think you might frighten it away, said the lion. The strange creature looked sad. I might, he said, one day when I'm fully grown, but I'm too little now. Everyone looked disappointed. Thud, 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 thud. Wait, said Basil, it's simple. None of us can make the monster go away on our own, so we must all do it together. This is a clever and brilliant idea, said Ralph the lion. His throat was suddenly much better. These great footprints will lead us to the monster, he said. Come along now. Smallest at the front, tallest at the back. Just so the monster can see everyone. Thud, 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 thud. The footprints led them great past great trees and over the muddy bed of a river. That's it. Keep going, called Ralph from the back. I wonder why Ralph was at the back. Lola, thank you. Look, squeaked Basil suddenly. The monster is on the other side of that hill. Everyone tiptoed to the top of the hill. And there it was, sitting with its back towards them. The monster. Go on, said the lion huskily to Basil. His throat had suddenly become sore again. I wonder why his throat had got sore again. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Basil looked at everyone. Then in a very small voice, he spoke to the monster. Excuse me? Only the monster's ears twitched. Excuse me, said Basil again. But we have come to ask you to... The monster turned. I'm sorry. I do beg your pardon, said the monster in a voice that was not at all monstrous. Were you speaking to me? That's oh, Suddenly, a voice called from the crowd. Mother! Everyone stared in amazement at the ugly beast. Mother? It's his mother? The monster is his mother. It can't be. It is. Then the monster beamed a great big smile and shouted out loudly. Raymond! Everyone was astonished. He's called Raymond. He's got a mother and he's called Raymond. It's a nice name. I like it. So do I. Raymond ran to his mother and she hugged him. I've been searching everywhere for you, she said. And then she turned to Basil. I'm sorry, you were saying something? Um, well, said Basil, we came to ask you, well, 
That is, we wanted to ask you, but Basil paused and he took a deep breath. Will you stay with us? Everyone suddenly cheered. Can we? Oh, please, can we? Raymond asked. Well, said his mother, we might. We'll just have to wait till your father gets here. Basil looked at Raymond. Then he looked at Raymond's enormous mother. Father, said Basil slowly. He's got a father. Just wait till his father gets here. Thud, thud, thud. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. It was an absolute favourite of mine, and my sons used to love listening to that when they were little. And I think the puppies quite enjoyed it, but I think they've disappeared now. <laughs>